Hi everyone, we are live. Welcome to our Monday live stream. It's always so much fun to be here. Today is a super hot day in Southern California. So let me know um, where you're watching from. If you're in California, it is, I think it's around 90 degrees here today. Super hot, it's supposed to cool down in the middle of the week in the 60s and 70s. So the plants don't know exactly what to do. I've shaded some of the things that I don't want to bolt, like the lettuce we planted on Saturday's video. So hopefully things are going well in your neck of the woods and it's warming up. Spring is on the way. I know there are a couple people in the live stream early that said it was snowing there, 30 degrees. So my goodness, I hope it warms up and you're able to get your spring veggies soon. So I just saw someone else fly by. The greenhouse is 105 degrees today. That's pretty hot for any plant. So you might wanna try and get some, uh, some air in there if you, if you possibly can. So welcome, there's people watching from all over the world, from South Africa, from uh, California, nor Northern and Southern California. Um, let's see who else is watching. Shining Diamond Stables, Pat Sella. Andrea Turner, Rudimental Gardener, uh, California Garden TV is on here. He's also in Southern California. Tranquil Waves, hi Luz, how are you? Jesse, it's great to, Crystal, there's Irene, oh my gosh. There's so many people on here and it's a lot of fun to join you guys today. And today we're gonna talk about, I thought it was a good topic for today being that it's super hot. We're gonna talk about heat tolerant greens. Greens that like the hot, hot weather. So if you watch Saturday's video, we talked about how to plant lettuce at different stages so you always have a harvest. There are a lot of great comments on there, but also some questions about what to do in the heat when you want to grow your greens. So um, we're gonna delve into that in just a moment. I've got some great ideas for you guys and I definitely wanna hear some greens that you like to grow as well. So before we, um, we dive into that, I do want to read the viewer of the week. Every week here, um, I choose a comment, a viewer that watched and made a comment, something that I was encouraged or inspired by. And so this week's viewer of the week is Victoria O'Shea and it would be a lot of fun if she was here watching today. So Victoria, if you you're out there um, please let me know I'd love to hear from you and Victoria wrote you are so encouraging you seem to know how disappointing it's been for me in the past to try to grow my garden I'll stick with it thanks a lot so I absolutely love that number one because we've all had trouble in the garden before me included I'm not immune um, by having things die on me I have lots of plants that die lots of plants that don't germinate and I know a lot of you guys too have shared with me how you've had your failure moments which I don't call failures I just call learning experiences you've made your mistakes in the garden but you know what that's how we learn when I first started gardening I didn't know that much I just dug in read a lot of um, information online watched a lot of YouTube videos and just dug in and tried it and made tons and tons of mistakes and that's the best way you learn and the great part about it is um, Whenever you make a mistake, you learn what works better, what to change, what to do next time. And some things might work for um, others, and not some things might work for you, but not for others. It really depends on how you like to garden, your growing conditions, how hot it is where you're at, how cold it is where you're at. So dig in and try it. And Victoria, I am so glad that you are not giving up and are sticking with it. We are all here to support and encourage each other. That's one thing I love about the live streams is it's really a community feel. People jump on early and are able to follow up on last week, how's your garden doing? How was your surgery this week? How's your family doing? And really support and encourage each other in the garden and in life as well. So keep at it, Victoria, don't give up. So I'm really proud of you for, for not giving up. So I just see a ton of uh, comments and questions flying by in the chat. If you are here and have not said hello, please do so in the chat, introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, what the weather's like, where you're at, what you're growing, and get to know the people that are here every single week. And join us on Mondays. We live stream every Monday at noon Pacific time. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us here. And let me just jump right in here to the very first heat tolerant green that is one of my favorites. And you guys might see it growing right here behind me. It's always interesting, do I point this way or that way? So this right here behind me, anybody know what this is? I'm sure you guys are familiar with this, a lot of you are. If you're brand new to gardening, you might not be. This is chard, and chard is an absolutely beautiful heat tolerant plant. It loves the heat 
Thank you, Rudimental Gardener and others that are answering chard. That's wonderful. Yes, it is a, one of the most heat tolerant greens that you can grow. I absolutely love it. And the wonderful thing about it is not only is it heat tolerant, it's also cold tolerant. So it's a great green to grow year round. Um, it is also a beautiful ornamental green. So you can grow it for an edible, grow it for an ornamental, and it's super, super hardy. You really almost can't kill it. Um, those of you that live in areas that get super hard frost, let me know how it does in your area in the winter time. In those heavy, um, super cold winter areas, you might have to grow it under some type of a cover. Here in Southern California, we just get light frost. It does absolutely beautifully. The great thing is when it starts looking a little bit shabby, you can just cut it down at the base of the stem here, cut all the leaves off, leave a little bit of stem, maybe an inch or so, and it will grow, branch out and grow right back. So there's some chart. In fact, I've had this chart here right behind me for about 18 months growing. You can see the leaves are pretty big. Um, I usually like to harvest them where, when they're a little bit smaller for use in salads because they're a lot sweeter. When they're this big, they're good for um, smoothies and good for wraps. Um, you can feed them to your chickens if you, you like to do that, but I like to you know, wrap up maybe some uh, chicken or uh, vegetables in it and use it for like a sandwich. It's super, super delicious. And look at the color of these leaves. I think this is a red chard. Maybe it's a rainbow mix, I'm not sure, but the leaves, or the stems, I mean, are red, absolutely gorgeous. So I would highly recommend, now that it is getting to be warm weather, at least it here is in California, don't let there be a gap in your greens, okay? So lettuce likes the cool weather. It's gonna be good up to about 75 or 80 degrees, but after that, it's gonna be tough for you to grow lettuce. So work with the weather, not against it and just kind of figure that your lettuce is gonna die out in the summer heat, maybe grow some indoors, but get some heat tolerant uh, greens growing um, in your garden. Start them from seed, start them right in the garden bed, and that way you, have, you don't have any gap in your greens. And there goes Mac walking by, chasing the lizards there on the stone wall. Okay, chard, it is a, a people are asking what's the, t the, what's the flavor like? Let me just pick a leaf here. It is a, a mild flavor, it's not like a super zippy flavor like the nasturtiums um, growing right behind me. It's pretty mild. If you, want it, um, if you want it tender, then definitely pick it small. It does have kind of a tough stem here, and if I, I, I miss it when it's small, what I'll do for salads is just de-stem it. So I'll just pull the stem off like this. Um, you can throw this in the compost pile, the stem part, or you can eat it if you, if you wanna, you know, eat a tough stem that's fine some people like that and then look at these aren't these beautiful greens absolutely lovely for a salad so I really encourage you guys um, give you to give chard a try it's super super easy to grow I did want to show you what the seeds look like I actually have the seeds in my heat tolerant greens collection so if you're looking for some seeds and want to grow some heat tolerant greens um, pick up the heat tolerant greens selection Super, super easy to grow and everything. I've got five varieties here for you, all in one handy collection. No need to guess about what seeds to buy. And um, our moderator, Everything Sunflowers, is mentioning that you can juice the stems. Great idea, I haven't juiced for a while now, so great idea, I'm sure you can probably throw it in smoothies as well. Um, the seeds here, let me pull out the heat, or the uh, chard seeds. Got five, okay, here, this is an El Dorado Swiss chard. There's a ton of chard varieties out there. The red chard, the rainbow mix, has beautiful rainbow colored stems. The El Dorado chard has like a white stem. And here's the seeds. You guys can see they kind of look like beet seeds. So um, inside, they're like little seed pods. Inside these little seed pods are several different seeds. So when you grow, when you plant a seed, it kind of grows like, like that, like this one is. See how it's growing out kind of in a bunch? Um, very easy to grow. So um, gardening with Country Girl, I don't have a chard collection, but I have uh, the heat tolerant collection, which has five heat tolerant greens. So that would be a great one for you to pick up on my website at CaliKimGardeningHome.com. Uh, Jesse, I love that comment. You can chop the stems small and use in stir fries as well. That's perfect. Um, I've never done that before, but I think it would probably be a great thing to do because it would almost be like a celery um, stock so you could use it per it would be perfect in fact I might try that for dinner tonight I've got some chicken thawing out and I was gonna put some um, some greens with it but I think I'll make you know some kind of a little stir-fry maybe to put on top 
with the charred um, greens, which would be a great little topping for kind of saute it all. Be a great topping with the chicken breast, squeeze some lemon over it, and there you go. You got a garden fresh dinner. It's, it's not hard to eat garden fresh. So that is my first lovely heat tolerant green to grow, and we're gonna need those heat tolerant greens here in SoCal. And I'm sure you will too once the weather starts um, heating up. So how long does it take to grow? Shauna, great question. Um, it goes from seed to harvest in probably about six to eight weeks. And you can plant it right in your garden beds, right in your containers. It's a wonderful container plant. Um, or you can plant it, start, start it from seed indoors and then plant it outside. Um, I like to start a lot of seeds indoors just because it gets things off to a really quick start and a lot of times um, I'll even do both. I'll have seeds going indoors and also plant some in garden beds. And <laughs> Mac's so funny. He's, he's right up there and just kind of wandering around the garden. He loves to be out here with me. Um, so a lot of times I'll start both in, in the garden beds and also indoors so that way I have a continual harvest. So give that a try, give chard a try. I would love to see um, how many people are growing chard and uh, let's get a bunch going. Okay, a couple questions here. Can you sow seed outside now, Andy? Yes, you absolutely can, Andy, especially you're in SoCal like I, I am. Um, chard is heat tolerant and cold tolerant. So I would suggest starting seeds outdoors. Um, if you're gonna put them right in the garden bed, you can start them outdoors a couple of weeks before your last frost, if you live in a frost prone area. Um, if you live in SoCal or an area that doesn't get frost, you can start them outdoors anytime and they're gonna sprout very quickly. And um, especially in the warm weather of the spring, the kind of the medium heats, they'll get established. And then once it gets hot, they're gonna keep on ticking and keep on growing for you without pooping out in the heat like the lettuce will. So let me see if there's any questions here in the chat as, um, uh, about chard, uh, let's see, Chicago, it's a beautiful day. Hi, Sandra, 72, oh my goodness, that is like so perfect. Um, 72 is the perfect temperature. Today it's a little bit too hot for me, about 90 degrees out. So I busted out the, you know, the, the summer dress and the tank tops, or in the flip flops today, because I'm telling you guys, I'm sweating it out here, but I have an umbrella up, so we should be okay. All right, let's see, any more, whoops, <laughs> any more, um, Thank you, Gigi. The garden is absolutely blooming and thriving right now in the springtime temperatures. Okay, are they perennials? Um, gosh, you know what? That's actually a good question. In, here in SoCal, they grow year round. I wonder if anyone's on here that can answer that question. I'm not sure if they're perennials in other climates. If you live in a southern climate, they will grow like a perennial. Um, so let me know if you're in a northern climate, um, how things are for you. If someone knows if it's a perennial, please let me know that. Um, question, can peas from Kirjan? Hi, how are you? I haven't seen you on here in a while. Can peas survive frost temperatures in containers? Absolutely, they are frost tolerant as well. So um, give that a go, especially if, you if you're in a, a heavy, you know, really cold winter area. Um, give that a go, and if you keep your containers, like maybe on a deck where it's a little bit more protected, then they will definitely survive frost. Frost. Light frost, not a problem. They definitely keep on go going in a light frost. So they're gonna do great. Like the container here that I have is a five gallon, one of my Cali Kim Smart Pots. You can get these over on my website. It has lettuce in it right now, but I have grown chard in containers. What I have it growing in here is a crate tower. So a lot of you have seen my videos on the crate towers. It really works great in the crate towers, um, and it's a great way to grow a little bit of food in a lot of space. I'm sorry, a lot of food in a little bit of space. So check out the videos on the lettuce crate towers if you wanna know how to build one. So it's a, a wonderful, wonderful vegetable to grow. And yes, Jenny Bunny, it can be grown as microgreens. It's a beautiful microgreen, especially the red chard. Um, it sprouts quickly, it has beautiful red stems, and it's very, very tasty as a microgreen. Okay, let's see here. Chard is hardy to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Learn to grow, thank you so much. I appreciate you answering that question. Um, I know you get cold up there in the Pacific Northwest, so you've got some experience with that. I don't know if you get 15 degrees, but I'm sure you get colder than we do. Okay, let's see here. I build my strawberry lettuce towers after I saw your videos. Robin, thank you. Aren't they fun to grow and I absolutely love it. They're super, super easy and Smart Pots now, guys, even has a crate liner 
which is perfect for the crates that you can pick up um, like this on Amazon. So um, I'll try and pop links to that um, in the video description. Super easy to grow and the crate liner really makes it a breeze to um, build them. And one thing I like to do guys, by the way, with the crate towers is put drip irrigation in them in each level, which really helps all the water flow down. Now I've done that to my other crate towers. I haven't got around to doing it to this one. I'm thinking about redoing this crate tower because um, honestly, I don't like the white in the garden. I think it just stands out too much and I'd rather have something that blends in a little bit more like the black. The white looks kind of dirty and I like my garden to kind of look a little bit more natural. So I think I'm gonna redo it and add in the drip irrigation to the levels. So maybe I'll do that on a video as well. Um, yeah, so check out the, um, the five gallon smart pots if you want to grow in that on my website. If you want to use the uh, crate liners, you can go over to smartpots.com and they do have a discount code that you can use, Cali Kim, to get a 10% discount. Okay, wow, this, the, the comments are flying by and guys, I'm going to try and answer all the questions I can. I know there's a lot flying by. I know there's some of you that are not able and I'm not able to get to your questions. And I'm gonna try and answer one question per person. I know if, if some of you ask five or six questions, I probably won't get to all of them and I'll try and answer what I can in the time that we have. Okay, um, next green that I absolutely love, and I know a lot of you have grown this as well, is kale. Excuse me just a minute. I'm telling you guys, it is hot out here. So I'm gonna head over actually where I do have some kale growing. Mac will hopefully um, follow along with me. What do you think, Mac? So hopefully I won't lose connection. If I do, I will be come right back to my spot here. But I've got some kale right over here. You can see it's um, also in a container. This is a, I think it's an eight foot long Smart Pots. This is called Prism Kale, it's absolutely gorgeous. Another wonderful heat tolerant green. And this one has been growing here for a couple of years. So um, that's another great thing about kale is you can chop it down once it start look, starts looking raggedy, it'll grow right back. But this is a beautiful kale, one of my favorites. It's a compact variety. Look at these leaves, guys. They are curly and just absolutely beautiful. In fact, I'm gonna grab a piece of it and head back over to my spot, but um, absolutely a beautiful, beautiful green. Kale has a little bit stronger of a flavor than chard, and oh, I see here we have a super chat. So let me check and see who that's from. Thank you so much. Um, that's from Diane. Love your videos and this live video from Diane Neary. Diane, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I love um, the support and encouragement that that is giving us and that really gives me a big lift today. So thank you so much, Diane. If you're not familiar with Super Chats, guys, you can click on, I don't know where it is on mobile, but I know on desktop, there's a little dollar sign. So you can click on that if you want to donate and help support our channel. So Diane, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's always so much fun to see those fly by. So um, the kale, it has more of a stronger flavor and there's so many different beautiful varieties of kale. Red Russian kale is one of my favorites. It kind of has, oh, in fact, I have some right here. I started some um, maybe three or four weeks ago. So these are little baby seedlings. So these were started inside and I'm gonna plant them out in the garden in just a couple of weeks. But look at the color on this Red Russian kale. Aren't those absolutely beautiful stems? And this, I think, is one of the more milder flavor kales. So um, that's a really fun one to grow. And what I like to do with kale, guys, again, it is um, heat tolerant, cold tolerant, very similar to the chard. Luz, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. You've been here like every week. Thank you for your support, for your encouragement, for always being so positive. And thank you so much for the super chat, super encouraging. So um, kale is, again, one of my very favorite greens. And you guys know this is a superfood. So we really need these superfoods in our diet for our health. I'm really I'm trying to add these to my smoothies a couple of times a week, to my salads. A lot of people don't um, love kale. But what you can do, because it does also have a really um, tough stem, is you can, again, destem it just like this. And tell me how you like to use these kale stems. I usually just throw them in the compost pile, but I'd love to hear what you like to do with it. And then you're gonna break your kale apart or chop it. And then what I like to do is throw it in a bowl 
and do just a little bit of olive oil over it and then kind of massage the kale with the olive oil and it does help break down kind of the um, tough fibers and then I put it in a salad I love to put like granny smith apples on it and maybe some dried cranberries and um, some kind of fruity dressing so guys kale is just the best for you add it into your smoothies with some raspberries uh, blueberries it's so delicious and a few planting tips it's so easy to grow it grows in the heat grows in the cold and um, again you can cut it back at the base and it will grow right back. So um, a wonderful heat tolerant green. And I definitely wanna encourage you to grow your, your um, chard, grow your kale, and that way you don't have a gap in your greens. A lot of people say, what greens do I grow in the heat? Kale and chard are my absolute standbys. Okay, I see a lot of great things um, flying by here. Um, my dog loves the stems. Oh my goodness, I wish Mac ate vegetables. He does not want to eat any of my vegetables so that kind of makes me sad but you know he's a great dog and stays out of my garden so I can't complain too much um, learn to grow I cook the kale stalks like broccoli or put in soups okay gonna add them to my little saute tonight put over my chicken salad or my chicken um, that sounds really good and Audrey thank you so much you're encouraging for us growers love the superfoods thank you save it for vegetable broths um, someone asked if I put fruit in my smoothies yes I, my smoothies I make with um, homemade yogurt. I make my yogurt in an instant pot. And then I add in frozen bananas, frozen like mixed berries, and then some kind of green, whether it's spinach or kale. Um, and then I, lately I've been adding in some protein powder because I'm trying to get more protein in my, um, in my diet. So um, yeah, it's super delicious in smoothies. And you can even sneak it into your um, kids' smoothies too. My son, again, not a vegetable eater, but I can sneak in a little bit of kale. Um, I kind of introduce it slowly, a little bit at first, and he doesn't, he's none the wiser. So I see Cliff on here, love, always love to see Cliff on here. I grew up with a southern mother, so all of our leafy greens were boiled. It's an acquired taste, but good for you. Boiling helps extract the nutrition. Oh wow, I didn't know that. And then do you uh, drink the water too, or how does that work, Cliff? That's, um, that's great. Okay, I do see a lot of questions here about how to keep the critters off. So yes, the critters do like the kale. I haven't had as many critters on my chard, but the kale, the aphids absolutely love the kale. Like they're just attracted to it. So what I like to do maybe once or twice a week is I head out and I get my uh, nozzle and put it on the jet um, setting and I just spray down my kale and if I do see aphids on there I, I give them a good spray with the jet and it knocks them off if you've got an infestation which I often do on my kale I have to spray it down every couple of days and eventually the aphids you know stop crawling back on your kale um, but you can also spray with neem oil um, I, I do I don't do that as often because I like to try the water first um, just to take care of it you know with water and not have to do the neem oil spray but I would definitely head out to your garden and spray down your greens like your kale um, or your, your chard, your kale, your brassicas, things like that. Spray it down with water and that really does help um, keep it bug free with the aphids, the spider mites, spider mites, that kind of thing. The other thing is when it does get really bug infested, and I actually have some that is pretty bad right now, um, you can just prune it. So just prune it down you know, again, right to here, and then the kale's gonna grow back another, another uh, week or so, and you're gonna see leafy growth coming out right from the stem. So it's the absolutely best green to grow. I love it. Gigi, oh my gosh, you guys, I am so touched. Gigi just super chatted $5. Thank you so much. You really helped me a lot how to plant veggies. Gigi, I'm so glad. That's why we're here, is to help you guys grow your own food and be healthier as a result. And just to give support and encouragement. That's why Camera Guy and I do this, because we love to hear those comments. So thank you so much. Okay, lemon water. I think Cliff might have answered my question. Um, hmm, not seeing it here. Okay, um, I Cliff, if you're out there, uh, let me know how you use that water, okay? <laughs> Okay, can we grow kale right now from Dawn? Awesome. Dawn, great to have you here today. I'm glad you made it. Yes, we can. Um, kale is planted very similar to chard. A couple weeks before your last frost date, you can sow seeds right in your garden, and or you can start seeds indoors and then plant it outside 
Um, you can grow it in the heat. If it's established, you can grow it over the winter time. I wouldn't necessarily try germinating it when it's, um, you know, super cold outside. But in the springtime, it's a perfect time to get your your kale and your chard established in your garden. And I am going to show you some seeds here. This is the red Russian kale. Again, from my um, heat tolerant greens seed collection. We have the red Russian in there. We have the blue scotch curled kale, which is very similar to the kale I showed you, the prism kale. Oh, lemon makes it easier to eat or not taste so bad. Okay, that's great, Cliff, thank you. Um, in our heat tolerant collection, we also have the El Dorado chard, which I just showed you. And we have the Paris Cause Romaine, which is a more heat tolerant variety of lettuce. And, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm just blown away. Andy, super chat today. Thank you for $5. Thank you for sharing all of your knowledge, Kim. Andy, you're so welcome. It's my pleasure. I love to share um, how to grow your own food. And I really appreciate your support, guys. You guys know I do this for my full-time job. And every little bit helps. And we do um, use those funds to uh, you know, support our channel and produce the good gardening content that we do. Okay, so let me show you some kale seed. Oh, that's the romaine. And there's one more heat tolerant seed in my collection here, but I'm gonna share that with you in just a moment. So, Red Russian, here we go. Okay, so, yes, someone else mentioned, um, I do have new packaging this spring. These bags are reusable. Um, they're, they're plastics, they're reusable, and they reclose, so you don't have to worry about folding them over. It's like a Ziploc bag. And then, if you want to, you can even, you can either keep the label on, or you can peel it off, use it for something else, um, or use it when you save your seeds. Okay, so kale seeds look like this. Kind of small, a little smaller than the chard. If you guys have never seen these before, they look really similar to like a broccoli or a cauliflower seed. So there you go, guys. There's your kale seeds. Sprinkle them in your garden beds and you are good to go on your heat tolerant greens. Okay, one last one I wanna share with you guys. Well, actually, let me head into the chat and answer questions first before we share our last heat tolerant green. I just love the energy here today. It's just so much fun, and Max out here just running around chasing lizards with me too, so <laughs> thank you so much. And another super chat. Wow, it's going crazy today with the super chats from Sean Reed. And looks like that one is for $1.99. Thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate you being here today and taking the time to join us. And I love that you're here learning how to grow your own food. So thank you so much. Okay, let's see here. Any other questions? Everything Sunflowers love the new bags. I think they're so much fun and I really tried to pick some bright colors for you guys for the seed collections. You guys know how much I love color. We Right now we have these red bags. We also have some blue ones. And you never know what color I'm gonna find and uh, send out with my seed collection. So I'm always looking for fun new things. Okay, um, let's see here. Steffi P, Southern style greens boiled with smoked meat of your choice and seasonings. My favorite thing to do with the greens we grow. Steffi, that is great. Oh my gosh, guys, I haven't had lunch yet and I am getting hungry, so I might have to go in and just cook me up some greens um, real quick here for my lunch. Actually, I was planning on having a smoothie with lunch, so maybe I'll just throw these in a the smoothie since it's so hot. Okay, um, Connie, great question here about aphids. When spraying off aphids and bugs off planted vegetables, don't they spread to plants nearby? Generally, Connie, um, what I try and do is spray them so they go down into the soil and kind of drown them in the water. Um, I haven't really seen a big problem with them crawling to plants nearby because usually they're they're in a puddle of water in my soil. So you know what, give it a go. It's, um, it's just a good little tip that you can try to avoid spraying your plants with anything else and just to keep it simple and inexpensive. So, um, and I saw someone ask too, um, to, uh, if you could spray with, uh, if you could spray your tomato plants off if you're having problems with bugs. And yes, you can. Um, you can definitely do that. I would do it in the morning before the sunlight gets too hot. That way, you know, that your plants have time to dry before the evening. And I think we had another super chat here. Oh, Sean, thank you so much. Meant to send $5 initially, great channel. Wonderful, Sean, thank you. I really, really appreciate your support. Such an encouragement to me. Okay, uh, Lindsay West, hey Kim, send me some of your warm weather to Alaska. Mid 70s is a heat wave, oh my gosh. I will do my best, Lindsay. I'm gonna put some in the mail to you right now and just send some over the internet. I know a lot of you all are out in the garden already, but some of you are still in the cold. And hang in there, guys. Keep watching our videos. 
we, uh, we're, we're heating up here and I know you guys will be heating up soon. All right, guys, um, let's see. Let me see if there's any other comments here or questions about kale. Uh, start with soy sauce is my favorite way to eat kale and chard. Okay, great tip. Um, Luz, I did a small experiment yesterday. I love experiments in the garden, Luz, you know that. Weighed my harvest of organic greens I used for my breakfast. Between spinach, cilantro, dill, chives, and green onions, it came out to two ounces or a $5 savings. That's awesome, Luz. You, uh, you would spend way, way, way more than that at the grocery store. You would spend so much money probably, especially if they were organic greens. So you think about it, you spend, um, my heat tolerant greens is $7.95. You get a ton of seeds in it. You're gonna grow yourself maybe even $100 worth of greens and be able to save seeds and you're gonna be able to even share with your neighbors and friends, which is always a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, another super chat. Let's see here, Misella. Oh my gosh, she's such a great friend. Learn to Grow has a wonderful YouTube channel. So wonderful that you've ventured into your own business. Happy for you and your milestones. Congratulations. Guys, if you have not had a chance to watch Misella's channel, I'm trying to, okay, there we go. If you have not had a chance to watch Learn to Grow's channel, please, um, I wanna give her a shout out. She's not only a great friend, her and her daughter are also growing um, the Kids Seed Collection, but she's been a huge encouragement and support to us here on our channel as well. And she does some wonderful um, videos on her channel with her kids. She's a homeschool mom, she has a crafting, I think it's on maybe a different channel. So check out her Instagram and her YouTube channel as well. Thank you so much Masella, I really appreciate it. Okay guys, I'm gonna dig right into our last heat tolerant green. Let me find my seeds here. And I know a lot of you have grown this from the heat tolerant greens collection. Oh, here it is. And that is New Zealand spinach. So this was actually a new one for me last year. Really enjoyed it. And one thing I love about New Zealand spinach um, is that the seeds are just so, so beautiful. So let me show you these seeds here, guys. They're like little seed pods as well, and they're kind of spiny. You can see them here, but very interesting. Absolutely, and they're just so much fun to grow. It's a very heat tolerant variety. It's a spinach-like green, so it tastes very similar to spinach, and I am going to give it a go. Oh, before I show you what, what a little plant I have growing here, with these seeds, you gotta be patient, guys. They do take some time to germinate because they're so large, and the shell, the outer shell is so hard. Look at that. So what I've tried to do, um, what has worked really well for me, is to, um, Soak the seeds overnight to soften up that hard outer shell. And I see someone here said, has a low germination rate. Okay, if, you, if you've had trouble germinating at RH, I'm gonna give you a little tip here. You can soak the seed overnight to soften that hard outer shell. You can also roll over it with a rolling pin to crush it to open up that seed pod. The thing that I have found that helps the most with germination though, because it's so heat tolerant, is to germinate them on a heating mat. So plant them in some peat pellets, Plant them in a cup with soil, although a peat pellet might work better because it's smaller and it will sit down on that heat mat. And that heat mat, similar to a pepper, it will give it that um, little bit of extra heat that it needs to germinate. So RH, I'd love for you to come back and um, try that tip and then come back and let me know how much better it works for you. So that's done wonders for me. Um, it was taken a couple of weeks to germinate and then once I popped it on that heat mat, planted some more seeds, it popped up a whole lot quicker. So. We're gonna take a little garden field trip today, wander across the garden, and I'll show you where my um, New Zealand spinach is growing. And along the way here, we can take a look at the garden. Max gonna trot along with me, and we'll see how things work. You guys can see I've got some shade cloth up today, again, because of the hot weather. I've got some peas growing there in the, um, the big cage. You saw that on the weekend video. And my red romaine is holding up pretty well to the heat today. And here's where I planted some seeds on Saturday. You can see the mulch is keeping the soil nice and moist. And um, I think that's gonna make it uh, through a hot day today and hopefully um, till the cool weather hits on uh, Wednesday or Thursday. So here I've got some New Zealand spinach in this container. Again, this is a great container plant as well. You can see it does look a lot different than regular spinach, although the leaves um, are very similar, but it trails off. So it's actually a good ground cover you can grow as well. Um, the leaves taste very similar to spinach, 
can see right here how they look. Um, so let me know if you've ever grown New Zealand spinach in a container or in ground. Um, this has been in this container I think for close to a year. I've cut it back a couple of times and it's a little bit slow taking off here because the weather's been cold in the winter. But once the heat hits, it'll start trailing um, all, all over this area. So we've got some red Russian kale here. And this, oh, actually here's some aphids. If you guys wanna see aphids on my kale, there actually are quite a few aphids in here. If you can see right down in there, they're covering that whole little branch. So I need to get in here and spray off this um, kale. This container doesn't grow super fast because it gets shaded by this big tree right here. So um, hopefully once the sun gets higher in the sky, we'll have a little better luck with that. I am absolutely loving these nasturtiums. And the hill is looking absolutely gorgeous with all of the flowers we have planted right now. So let me know in the chat, guys. I hope I'm not losing connection here. If you've ever grown New Zealand spinach, I know a lot of you also grow the Malabar spinach. And I'd love to hear what other kinds of heat tolerant greens you grow besides the red Russian kale or the kale, the chard, and the New Zealand spinach. Malabar spinach is a great one too. It climbs and is great to grow on a trellis. So um, that's a very popular one. It does great in the hot weather. Okay, let's head back to the chat. Your, your round spinach, New Zealand spinach is a year round plant. It does great here in Southern California. Again, that's the only place I've grown it. So if you've grown it in the winter time in your climate, let me know how it does. And that's the wonderful thing about this uh, live stream is we get people here from all growing conditions so we can learn from each other. Okay, I live in Alaska, so I, from Lindsay, I don't really have a problem with things bolting, but I do have problems with heat-loving plants. Any ideas of tomatoes and peppers that would do good in a cooler region? Um, I did grow a, a cold uh, t tomato that was a little bit more um, cold tolerant last year. It was called the uh, Siberian, I believe it's a Siberian tomato. So it does better in cooler temperatures. Um, the other thing you could do, Lindsay, is try growing smaller varieties of tomatoes, like the cherry tomatoes, because they don't need um, quite as long of a growing season to, uh, to ripen. So you might want to try the Tiny Tim tomato as a great dwarf tomato. You can check out my Instagram. I just posted a really nice picture of that the other day. The tomatoes are already starting to ripen up, and those are in my... Uh, a uh, small space seed collection, or you can also purchase them and grow them in a smart pot. So they're really nice, good container tomato as well. Oh, and Christy's popping in the chat here. I also meant to mention, um, if you want more information here on how to grow some of these heat tolerant greens, I do have a video that I did last summer on how to grow four heat tolerant greens. So you might wanna go over and watch that video, check it out for all the planting instructions and um, get some more in-depth information on that. And also check out the uh, lettuce and greens plant playlist. Um, I put together a playlist on how to grow lettuce, how to, you know, different tips on pruning kale and things like that. You know, a lot of different um, details on lettuce and greens. So you can check that out over my YouTube channel as well. Okay, I planted my spinach in the fall and put the container in between my large containers for shade and protection from the wind. Great idea. A great in a rectangle container. Thanks, thank you so much, Luz, um, for posting that tip. That's a, uh, a great... Uh, question or great great comment okay Sandra here I see your question here in case Kim doesn't get to my question does anyone know if it's bad if different lettuce seeds grow in the same peat pellet that is absolutely fine um, no worries about that you can plant a couple different varieties often that happens to me when I'm sprinkling my seeds in my peat pellets and they get mixed up and that's not gonna hurt anything you're just gonna have a really beautiful looking crop of lettuce which is always fun so this container here has several different varieties I probably have, or maybe just two varieties. I planted this in the video on Saturday. It's got the prize head, um, which is different colors, and then the um, Paris cause back in here. And then another one I have upstairs has the red sails, which is a really bright red variety. So absolutely not a problem. It's not gonna hurt anything. Again, the wonderful thing about gardening is experiment, do what you like, try it, and see what works for you. Okay. Let's see, amaranth, okay, yes, that's also a good um, green to grow. Hello from Athens, Greece. 
can I plant kale in the same bed as snap beans? You absolutely can, not a problem. Kale um, likes the heat, beans like the heat, so um, that will do just great. So with containers, you wanna try and plant maybe um, plants with similar growing needs together. So plant, plant some cool weather vegetables, you know, like lettuce and um, maybe beets and maybe peas in the same container, and then plant your heat tolerant vegetables like lettuce and peppers and cucumbers in a similar, um, in the same container as well. Okay guys, we have another super chat, oh my goodness. Let's see, thank you so much. I'm trying to see who, who super chatted. Oh, Colleen, oh hi Colleen, how are you? I grow your chard, spinach, and kale in pots, easy. That's awesome Colleen, thank you so much for the super chat. I am so glad that you are growing those greens. Aren't they fun to grow in a container? And I love having those containers right outside my back door. So Colleen, Hopefully you're able to, um, to head out and pick your greens and have greens every single day. Thank you so much for all of your support. Okay, cancel, let's see. Would love to have a hot pepper seed collection. Okay, thank you for that suggestion. Um, I will definitely put that on my list of possible um, seed collections. That's a great idea. We do have a tomato and pepper collection, but we don't have a hot pepper collection. We have a pepper collection. It has three sweets and two hots. So I'll definitely add that to my list. So let me scroll through and answer a couple more questions. Um, Jackie, can you germinate the seeds on a damp paper towel? And are you thinking maybe kale seeds, Jackie? Um, and you know what? I actually have never germinated seeds with the wet paper towel method. I know if California Garden TV is still on here, I was just talking to him and he mentioned that he's done that. In fact, he just did a video a couple weeks ago. You can go over and check out his YouTube channel, California Garden TV on germinating pepper seeds um, in a wet paper towel. So check out his video, and if you're still on here, Brian, if you wanna give us a, a few comments on that, that would be great as well. I'm sure red Russian kale or any kind of type of kale would work well in a paper towel. It's a super easy to germinate seed, so I'm sure that would work as well. Okay, one more question here, guys, before I sign off. I need smart pots, you can definitely pick some up the, the um, monogrammed ones or the embroidered ones over on my website or pick some up at smartpots.com. Okay, what was the starting cost of your farm? Uh, well, we bought our house about seven years ago, but you know, California prices are, are unfortunately pretty high. And someone had just asked me about our backyard. We actually were on a uh, backyard TV show where um, they provided the design for us and all of our friends and family helped us build our backyard. So I think we might have a video on that, but I'm not sure exactly what it's called. So um, maybe I'll try and post that if I can find it. Okay, everything sunflowers and more. Thank you so much. Visit my website kellykimgardenhome.com for the free growing guide to grow three vegetables in six weeks. It's a great growing guide if you're just starting out, how to grow lettuce, peas, and beans. It'll get you started and give you some great information. So guys, it was so much fun. So much, what a great group today. If you want to grow some heat tolerant greens and need seeds, I would be absolutely honored if you would pick up my heat tolerant green seed collection and grow the same heat tolerant greens I am. So, um, oh, one more little tip here. I saw someone mention about growing under a canopy or in shade cloth. That would be great as well on super hot days like today. You can bring your lettuce inside and give a little bit of a break and then put it back outside when the weather cools off. So guys, hope you have a great week. We'll see you next Monday at noon Pacific time. Make sure you stay tuned because hopefully this week we will be posting the second video in the Kids Garden series. We filmed that yesterday and are super excited filmed with California Garden TV and the kids, and we're really excited to be posting that soon. All right, guys, thank you so much.